Welcome to San Antonio. You are all most welcome here, familiar faces and those visiting alike. Make sure those cell phones are on silent or turned off. And at this time, you may rise and greet those around you. Good morning. And we do invite you to join and sing our gathering song. The words will be found up on the big screen. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen, let us sing. Let us sing 
Good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. And let's begin our prayer together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let's take a moment first to call to my own, our own sinfulness, our need for God's healing and mercy. Jesus, you died and rose from the dead. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth is to people of good will. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, has conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep this solemnity of, your, of our Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought about by your Holy Spirit, rise up in the light of life. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in Him. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in Him. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This is the day, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in Him. The right hand of God has struck with power. The right hand of God is exalted. I shall not die. But I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in Him. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone by the Lord has this been done it is wonderful in our life this is the day this is the day this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice let us rejoice let us rejoice and be glad in Him this is the day, this is the day, this is 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Declaring what you saw wayfaring The tomb of Christ who is living The glory of Jesus' resurrection Our angels are testing The shroud and napkins resting Yes, my voice, my home is a reason Yeah. 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who'd arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. That last bit scared me, made my heart jump a little bit. <laughs> but it was pretty, wasn't it? Um, when I was born, God played a very cruel joke on me. But it was a joke that had a point, I think, and became a parable for my whole life. God gave me a very terrible sense of direction. So bad, in fact, that you can pretty much count on me going the wrong way. I get lost and have seen places that no other man has ever seen. <laughs> this was before the advent of GPS, which is a long time ago. In fact, my friends considered me, before they had GPS, a version of it, because they would ask me which way to go and do the opposite and always find where they wanted to go. And it became a running joke among my family and my friends. Never follow Dave, never. And it was very humiliating because no matter what I did, my car was full of maps and whenever anybody would give me directions to their house, I would have them, I would write them down very carefully. Um, and I often still got lost, even with my own directions. But that was, there's something broken in my head and it's always been that way. But then God had mercy and he created GPS <laughs> for me, <laughs> just for me. And since then, I've had a much better time of it. Although I don't have anywhere near as many adventures as I did when I was younger. But this was a parable for me because it was a reminder that all of us are lost and wandering around in this world. And we need someone to give us direction. And the direction, the whole point of the gospel, is to give us God's direction on how to live and where to go. Now there are some men that have had problems in their life taking directions. When they get lost on the road, they will continue to wander around aimlessly until their wives yell at them, pull over and ask somebody where to go, ask for directions. It's a pride thing. I used to suffer from that, but that got beaten out of me real quick. 
I'm an unusual man and that I have no trouble asking for permission and going up to people and saying, hello, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Can you tell me where I am and how to get to this place? My ego crushed. But after a while, you realize that's not so bad. You learn how to ask for help. You learn how to ask for directions. If your pride gets in the way and you stubbornly believe that, well, if I just keep going, I know I'm going to see a sign along the way that's going to tell me I'm doing, I've been right all along, uh, you're in for quite a nasty surprise. And we'll see places that you really were never meant to see. The gospel is about that kind of direction. God wants us to be with him. That's our ultimate purpose. He created us for himself. And our hearts and lives are always restless while we're searching for that one missing piece that's going to make us whole. That's St. Augustine. But in the process, we stubbornly hang on to our own way and we get ourselves lost. All that's important in life is to find our way back to our maker, the one who created us. He put us in this world to learn everything that life has to teach us, both in the good and the bad, to taste life to its fullness, both in the sweet and in the sour, in the pleasure and in the pain. And not to lose heart because we make mistakes, but to learn from those mistakes. And not to stubbornly hang on to those mistakes because that is what sin is. And it leads us away from God into dark places that only get darker. In the fullness of time, he sent his son into the world, Jesus Christ, to be human like we're human and to be a living example. He used to use imagery to describe that. He would call himself, I am the good shepherd. You are my sheep, if you choose to be. My sheep know me. They know and hear the sound of my voice. They won't listen to anyone else, to any other shepherd. They know the sound of my voice and they follow me. And I will not lead them wrong. I will lead them, as David said, to green fields beside still waters where their souls can find peace, where they will find happiness and the fulfillment of why they were made and what they were made for. But then he did an odd thing, just like God. He came to the human race and taught his gospel. But then he said, my last lesson, I'm going to act out in the great ending of my life, the great passion play, which you and I have been reenacting over the last three days, the great triduum, starting on Holy Thursday, the Last Supper, his last meal with his friends, and then into the Garden of Gethsemane, where he prayed in anxiety and fear and dread, begging his father, can we not do this? Is there a way out of this? Just as you and I would when we see what's ahead of us and see how stark and terrifying it is. But not my way, but your will. Not my will, but your will be done. His path and journey continues through Good Friday his journey of pain, carrying his cross up that last road. Uh, we call it the Via Dolorosa, the road of sorrow. Carrying his cross on his back, carrying the sins of the whole world, yours and mine, on his back, all the time that he was innocent. He bore the burden of justice on himself strange that God would do this. And isn't it weird that we call it Good Friday? It doesn't sound good to me, but the truth is it's very good for me. 
It's good for all of us, and that's why we call it Good Friday. Bad Friday for Jesus, Good Friday for you and me. Because in that sacrifice of himself, willing, like the lamb that did not open his mouth to complain, but embraced the cross, he destroyed our sin, put it to death, and paid the price for it, for us. That's why we call it Good Friday. And we reenact the passion, this terrible, terrible execution. Very stark, very ugly. And those of you that are part of the experience, that come and, and participate in Good Friday and the services, you watch it, you reenact it with us. You say the words as the people in the crowd, crucify him, crucify him. It's terrifying. I've always been uncomfortable saying those words. But it's my sins that did it. In a sense, those words are mine. That call is mine. And I need it to be. <laughs> because my sense of direction is so lousy. I cannot find my way to God without God's help, without my good shepherd. And so he says, follow me, David. Pay close attention to these three days and the journey that I walk because the Via Dolorosa, the carrying of the cross up that road on the way to Calvary where he's gonna be nailed to it, that's my road. That's your road too. All of the sufferings that you endure in life, all of the pains and disappointments, the loneliness and the failures, all of the sins that you commit that shame you, all of the weaknesses in your body, in your flesh, in your character and personality. All of that is the cross that you're carrying on your back. Do you notice how heavy it is? It's heavy. And it bears you down. And like Jesus fell three times on that road, I've fallen a thousand times that or more, conservatively speaking. My cross always drags my face into the dirt. Some of them are little ones, like my stupid sense of direction that humiliates me. Or some of them are big ones, like my ego and my pride and my sin and my stubbornness and the lusts and the things that dominate me that should not, that I have a hard time getting free of. In fact, all I can do is with quivering knees stand up under the weight of it and drag them forward. And where are we heading? Up that hill where we will die on it. And we call this a Good Friday? We do. Because just as the story of Jesus didn't end on that Friday, it will not end for you and me. Did you know that in the evening of Good Friday when all the services are over, the priests will blow out the vigil candle in the, in the chapel. They will blow it out, which signifies the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist there in the tabernacle. We leave it lit all the time, 24 seven, all year round, except on Good Friday night and Holy Saturday. We open the tabernacle, we take the Eucharist out and we blow out the candle. The tabernacle becomes the empty tomb. Sorry, Jesus is gone. He's not here. That stark day we call Holy Saturday as a reminder that he's left this world and yet in another real sense not because the Eucharist is the living presence of Jesus Christ, not the dead body of Jesus Christ. So he has no place in the tomb. Christ who lives isn't there. So we leave it empty until Easter morning when we fill it up again and we leave the light lit and we leave it lit all year round. God is with us, Emmanuel. Jesus is in his Eucharist, in his word and in his people's hearts. You and I, follow our own Via Dolorosa. We do it in loneliness and we do it in fear. 
We come together as a church, as a people to worship because we realize we're not in this by ourselves. And sometimes we have to stop and ask for directions. And sometimes we need to lean on the strength of each other. My prayer is a feeble thing. So I come here and with my feeble voice, I join it to yours so that our prayer will be louder and stronger and a lot more beautiful with them singing it. We blend our words and our prayers and our pain and our need together as a people. We stand as a family. And that makes our prayer more powerful. That's what Jesus said. Wherever three or more of you come in my name, I will be right there with you. So come together and pray. That's why we come to church. That's why we're here. That's why we invite you to come every Sunday. This is really going on every Sunday. It's a marvelous and beautiful thing, a gift that is yours. But I know, I get like you. I get like many people. My life is complicated and full and busy. I find myself not having time to pray. And so I find th that I neglect it. It's like neglecting spending time with the people that you love the most because you're too busy. Too busy to love, too busy to laugh, too busy to visit. What's wrong with you? I have to ask myself that all the time. What's wrong with you? Can you imagine never calling your mother? Your mother would complain. You never call your mother to visit with her. You love your mom, there's no question about it. But you never call her, you're busy. And you just assume, well, she's gonna know that I love her and the point of calling her is to tell her that. Do you call your mother because you always want something from her? Is the reason that you contact friends because you want them to give you something? Isn't the point to be with them? Just to be in their presence, even if it's on a phone call or in a text message. To be with them in some way. Well, that's what prayer is. That's all prayer is. You and I don't have anything that we can tell God that he doesn't already know. Jesus said it himself when his disciples asked him, teach us a prayer, teach us how to pray. He said, and he resisted it. He said, okay, but listen. He says, when you pray, don't go babbling on like the pagans do. They think if they multiply their words that God will listen. He says, keep it simple. He says, remember, your Father in heaven already knows what your needs are before you even ask him. This is how you should pray. Pray like this. And he taught the Our Father, a very small little prayer that's very beautiful and says so much if you peel it apart and think about it line by line. It's really a little miracle. It is a GPS of how to live and, how to, and where to go. God the Father created us, put us into this world to live, to learn, to be created, and to grow. And then he calls us back to himself. And the person that comes back is changed by the life we've lived. And one of the greatest tools of that creation, one of the greatest instruments, is your pain, your suffering, your cross, even your failures can be your teachers. So long as you pick it up, drag it forward toward Calvary, and you do it with faith. The commandment of the Lord is this. Take up your cross and follow me. He doesn't say, if you follow me, you won't have a cross. You won't have problems. I'll take all your problems away. I'll give you the gospel of prosperity. Believe in me, and all your problems will disappear. That's a lie. The savior of the world took the hard road. And he said, if you're gonna follow me, you have to pick up your cross and follow me because the only way to Easter Sunday is through Calvary. The only way to come out of the tomb is to go into the tomb. And you gotta drag all of your garbage with you because that has to stay and you get to come out. New, reborn a new creation. 
I remember always the words of Jesus. He said to his disciples, see, understand, I make all things new again. Follow me. But pick up your cross and do it because it's coming with you whether you like it or not. It's like that toilet paper you get stuck on your shoe and you're the last one to know it and everybody's laughing at you. We drag our flaws through life that way. And a lot of them we're not even aware of. God says, bring it. Bring everything in you, including that which is broken. And it's going to hurt. The cross always hurts. But the cross, Good Friday, is not the last word. It's not your last day. It's just the last day of the cross, the last day of the pain. Because Easter Sunday's coming. A new birth, a new beginning that's going to be very different from anything that you and I know. But to get there, we're on the way to Calvary and the tomb. And I know I'm not in a hurry to get there any more than you are. And like Jesus in the garden, Father, let this cup pass me by. But he's telling us, I can't let this cup pass you by, David. This cross is the way to me. Your burdens, your struggles, your, your troubles, they're all creating you. That's the path that leads to where I am. So follow it. <laughs> it's a hard GPS to listen to, isn't it? But we take it one day at a time. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please remain seated. We're going to do our, our Easter renewal of our baptismal promises, and I want you to be relaxed while I get you soaked. My dear brothers and sisters, through this Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him in a newness of life. So now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we rejected Satan and all of his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you reject Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of our sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestowed on us forgiveness for our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. I went 
to the river to pray Studying about that good old way And who shall wear the starry crown Good Lord, show me the way Oh brothers, let's go down Let's go down, come on down Oh brothers, let's go down probably noticed that the people in the center aisle are holier than everybody else now. <laughs> well, that's okay. The Lord has promised to hear the prayers of his faithful ones. So in faith, we lift our hearts and our intentions to him. After each of these petitions, if you please join us in praying, Lord, hear our prayer. of joy. May the Holy Spirit empower us to share the good news with all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve in the judicial system and in law enforcement, may the Lord guide them in the ways of justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear us. O Lord, hear our prayer. For all who do not believe or understand, may the light of the risen Christ draw them to faith and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear us. O Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may we be drawn more deeply into personal relationship with Christ through his loving power. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear us, O oh, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially Christy Thomas and Marie Whitke, 
May the risen Christ, who knew pain and suffering in his own life, grant them peace and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, may they rest in eternal peace in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our parish, which we remember in a special way at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. God of power and might, hear these prayers that we offer you today through the risen Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the love of Christ does Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, exultant with paschal gladness, we offer this sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And let's pray together as one family in the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. Amen. And let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Worthy that you should enter under my roof. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us. Receive it. Right again with 
love that cannot end. From what God joins, no one can divide. Bread of life, bread of life. Those who eat this bread shall live and never die. Bread of life. Oh 
they wept The morning sun was dead The Savior of the world was fallen His body on the cross His blood poured out for us The weight of every curse upon Him
was dead in the grave I was covered in sin and shame I heard mercy call my name He wrote the stone away Amen Let us pray. O oh God, look upon your church with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by these Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you leave, you carry Jesus within you. You are now the new tabernacle, meant to carry him out into the world. So do your best with that. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God.
says love. 